Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. And in today's video, I'm going to be loading up the loaded envelope that I made with my friend Danny during our last Fridays with Friends. I hope you'll stick around, see what all is going to go in here, and find out how you can enter to win it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. My friend Danny and I have been getting together for some Fridays with Friends live crafting events. We're going to try this out during the winter so we can get together to craft with each other and we can chat with you. Well, last Friday, Danny taught me how to make a loaded envelope with just one piece of 12 by 12 paper. Here's what I made while we were crafting together to see what Danny used and made and get some great tips and a tutorial on how to make this for yourself. I will link that original Friday with Friends videos in that description box below. Now, if you don't yet subscribe to Danny, I do have her channel in the description box. So make sure to go over there, click on that subscribe button and watch some of her awesome videos while you're there. Today I thought I would stop by and show you everything that I'm going to load this with. Now I did use a piece of paper from this Let's Party collection kit and I plan on using the pages from it to load up the main envelopes. It has some cardstock stickers in there. There are some cut aparts and then lots of fun birthday themed papers. I'm also going to show you some embellishments I made. We're going to make a little shaker mix and I have a surprise stamp and die set to add to it later. Let's load this thing up. The pocket is approximately five and a half by eight and a quarter. So I thought that five by seven pieces of the paper would fit in here nicely and still give some room for expansion. So for the pattern papers, I will cut some so the pattern is portrait and others so the pattern is vertical. And I figure with that five by seven size, there will be some left over if the recipient wants to cut it into shapes or tags or use it as strips on their cards. Now for the cut aparts, I will just cut them down into individual cards. Now some that you maybe can't use on fronts of cards, there are also patterns on the back. All of the papers and cut aparts are cut down, so let's get these added to the envelope. For my pattern papers, they're just gonna go right in that main pocket. And then for the cut aparts, I made a vellum envelope and I made it so it would fit these largest ones, but I did add some extra just for the thickness of all the other ones. So when I was looking on my envelope punch board, I looked for a four and a half by four and a half inch envelope. So this piece was seven and a half and then I punch it at three and three quarters. And I thought by using vellum, that would just add a little fun touch where you could partially see what was inside. I will have it so the printed part or the part with, you know, the cut apart will be showing at the back and I'll just slip it in there with the flap at the back and that will also keep it closed. And then these two, since they're larger, I will just slip them behind this and these will also go in that largest pocket. Now let's get some embellishments and start filling up our front one a little bit. When I think of birthday, I think of candles, cake, confetti. So I thought I would make a little shaker mix. Now I'm gonna be using some diamond dots, which these are just the single colors you can buy at like Joanne or Hobby Lobby. And I did pre-choose five that I thought would go well with my papers. 
And these could either be used in a shaker or you can just add them to the front like you would a sequin or an enamel dot. From the pattern paper, I chose two pinks, a yellow and an aqua. And then just for a little added sparkle and shine, I have a white holographic. I'm just gonna put some here and mix it up and then we'll get it bagged. Another embellishment I wanted to make, since the loaded envelope itself has some rosettes, are rosettes from some of the leftover pattern paper. To do this, I got out this Tim Holtz Alterations, it's called Mini Paper Rosettes, and this is an oldie but a goodie. And I'm just gonna use a scrap of the pattern paper, and this does cut two different sizes, so I'll make both of those. Earlier, I cut a strip and I turned one into a decorated paper clip and the other one I just left with a flat back. I did decorate the front with some of those stickers from the collection kit. Here's a look at my finished rosettes. To decorate the fronts of these, I did just use some pattern paper that was the same as the part of the rosette that's showing. Now I'm gonna package these up with the shaker elements and off camera, I chose some twine in pink and a green that I thought would match the collection. So we will add all of this to a little baggie that I had here. And I just cut a piece of the pattern paper to four by four to put as the backer. This large one I will put on the outside of the envelope, so I'll just be packaging up these three rosettes and this. The next thing I'm gonna put in there are some stickers from this sticker sheet. I think I will kind of weed this. So I'm gonna take off the part that is not a sticker or the negative, and that way when I go to cut the stickers apart, it will be a little bit easier to tell where each of the stickers ends. And I'm just gonna go in and cut some of these out to send to the recipient. Off camera, I made another little vellum envelope and I'm gonna to try to cut so that whatever pieces I leave are going to fit in this envelope. So sometimes that might be a single sticker or it might be a piece with multiples. And I think I'll slip this in front of the embellishments and the rosettes we made. Now, one thing I did mention when Danny was teaching me how to make this is I probably should have chosen something like red line tape to make sure once it's all full that everything stays adhered together. I did notice at the bottom pocket, it really wants to pull at that adhesive. So what I thought I would do is kind of up here how we have those flaps. I thought I would do the same thing kind of down here and that might release some of that pressure that's trying to pull this away. So off camera, I found the center of this pocket and I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip in a little way. And then I'll do the same thing where I turn these corners back. Now I can put the embellishments back in there. You can see a little bit more of them. One thing that Danny says she does when she sends hers out is make a card that uses some of the elements from the kit and then she has a place to write the personal note to the recipient. Well, I thought I would do the same thing. So I pre-cut a couple of the pattern papers and then I cut a piece of white cardstock and used my dots embossing folder on it and I'll be decorating the front with some stickers. Now, one thing you'll see me do is bring out my embossing buddy and tap it on the back of the sticker. That's so I can use foam tape on it, lift it up off the card, but then the area around it will no longer be sticky. 
While I work on assembling the card and adding some of those diamond dots for embellishments, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today I would like to know, have you ever used diamond dots to embellish your cards or in a shaker? Let me know in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. And now here are some close-up looks at the finished card. This will go in the big pocket. And then finally, I dug into my treasure box and I found this stamp and die set that is birthday themed. So I'm going to include this as well. This was so much fun, not only to make, but to load up with lots of little goodies. Now I'm going to tell you how you can maybe be the lucky recipient. First of all, you do need to be a subscriber to my channel. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. If you're interested in entering, just click on that subscribe button below this video if you haven't already. Secondly, you need to be 18 years or older. And for this one, you do need to be in the United States. Just because of the size and the weight, I'm only gonna be able to ship it here. If you're interested in winning, give this video a thumbs up and then leave a comment below and let me know what month you were born in. Please don't add days or years or anything, just the month. And then make sure to add the hashtag hashtag birthday. It does need to look exactly like on screen because that's how I will narrow down the comments for our winner. You will have until midnight on Monday, December 26th to leave that comment and then I will be back early in the new year to announce the winner. When I do announce the winner, they will have one week to contact me and claim the prize. If it isn't claimed, then I will do one more redraw using those original entrants. If you have any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.